Well, hidey ho, my peeps. Uh, it's uh, Thursday, and I, uh, just on a wild hair, I decided I was going to make a roll cake with a cream cheese ginger filling. And I'm going to use um, this lemon cake mix uh, that I picked up at the 99 cent store. Um, I picked it, I got it because it's supposed to be particularly moist. And when you do a roll cake, you want a cake that's pretty moist. So if it were me and um, I were using a, a, a different sort of Dollar Tree cake mix, I'd probably add maybe some mayonnaise or something like that um, to, to kind of moisten it up a little bit. So anyhow, um, here we have our cake mix. I did not use oil, as they suggested. I used butter that I brought to room temperature. So that should aid in the, you know, in the taste of this. And then I'm going to take that and pour it onto, onto this uh, sheet, this baking sheet with, um, with parchment paper that I'm going to oil. So let me go ahead and prepare that prepare that so you can see what it looks like okay so all I did here was um, I folded my paper back so it made a nice neat liner I went ahead and used some just regular old vegetable oil you could use Pam or coconut oil or butter whatever you wanted to use to go ahead and grease this thing now I've got some little bit of flour I'm gonna go ahead and flour over my over my grease and then we'll be ready to pour the cake now when you pour it in here you don't want it to go all the way to the edge um, as I'll show you um, what we do is pour it so that we kind of create a little rectangle okay and the way I do that is I just grab a spatula and my bowl and I'd start in the middle and I just kind of pour it, making it uh, as even as I can. You can see I'm working my way out from the center. Just kind of pouring it into a into a rectangle shape. I'm trying to stay about an inch, at least an inch from the edge of the parchment paper. And just pour it and pour it just keep moving around if it gets out of bounds don't worry you can always uh, um, scoop it back into line I'll show you how to do that also if the edges are uneven that's okay because when you're done rolling it up you're gonna cut off the two ends anyhow so you won't see you know, the uneven edges will be gone. I'm just going to go ahead and get the, get the rest out of the bowl here. Okay. Now, this batter um, is a little bit, oh, runnier, I guess, than the batter that I, when I, that, um, I make from scratch. I'm not even going to worry about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and kind of kind of make it as even as I possibly can by moving the spatula around. And I can see that we're going we're going out of bounds here, but you know I'm not going to worry about that. I don't think that is going to be a problem. I think. The idea is you don't want it touching the edges so that you, so that it might get pulled or broken when you try to um, take it out of the pan. But I think as long as I'm really careful with those edges, I will be fine. Okay, so now here we go. This is what it looks like when it's all poured into the pan. You can see that. Now this pan is going to go into until the into the oven at 350 until the cake is done and you know I, I usually just use the 
the touch test. If it bounces back, I know it's done. So this will take maybe 18 to 25 minutes, depending on, you know, other circumstances. So here we go into the oven. And I will come back when it's done. Okay, the cake is almost ready to come out of the oven. I've set up a little co cooling station right here. Um, I am using a breadboard, and since I don't have wire racks, I've set up four little ramekins. So I will put the uh, sheet, um, the baking sheet, on top of those four ramekins and let it cool till it's um, kind of warm to the touch takes about five minutes or so. All right, the cake is now out of the oven. It's a nice golden brown. Um, it uh, passes the bounce back test. So we're going to let it sit here atop its little ramekins for about five minutes. Then we're going to turn it out, um, turn it upside down onto a um, I'm going to use parchment paper, but you could also use a kitchen towel. I mean a regular baking cloth is what I mean. Um, and a baking cloth is a very tightly woven cotton cloth like this. It, and whichever one you use, you're going to want to make sure that you use, that we coat it nicely with uh, uh, powdered sugar before we cover it and turn it. So I'll show you that. Uh, after this is cooled. Okay, so this cake has been um, cooling for about, it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, when I touch it, it's warm, but you know, all the metal is cool to the touch, which is about perfect. You don't want it cold or room temperature, and you definitely don't want it too hot. So I'm finding if your metal is cool, and this just has it has some warmth coming off here. Okay, I've got some um, uh, powdered sugar here, and I'm just going to go ahead and cover this with powdered sugar. Um, I think I'm just going to do it like this. I'm not going to get out my sieve or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and and throw some on the top like so. And how many tablespoons is this? I would say. This is about five tablespoons worth to cover this. To cover this, now I'm just gonna gonna smooth it around the top a little bit like so. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use parchment instead of the uh, baking towel. Um, this is an experiment. Don't know how it's gonna turn out. I hope I don't lose the cake. Um, I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out and then grab the handle so that it's tight against the cake and we're going to flip it. One, two, well, no, wait a second. We're not going to flip it. What we're going to do, we're going to take these ramekins off first so it will lay flat on the board. All right, let's see. One, two, three, boom. Okay, I think that worked out beautifully. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pull the baking sheet off, and voila! Look, I just lost a little bit in the corners, but uh, mm, tastes yummy. But we got it over. That's great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this bottom layer gently and carefully without tearing the cake. I'm going to pull this back and that will see like right here I'm beginning to tear it a little bit so I'm just going to hold that down and work my way around the places that want to tear. Um, again Okay, I'm going to pull it from this edge because that's not tearing. And I'm going to pull it towards the edge that's tearing. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a little rough on the sides because I'll just pull it down. That way it won't tear. 
There we go. All right. And then you'll just discard this one. Now you have the bottom surface of the cake that you can see. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put um, powdered sugar on this side as well. And so you don't need a whole lot. Now this is about four tablespoons. And you're going to go ahead and put that evenly on the cake. More or less evenly. Now comes the fun part. We're going to roll this cake up. And as we roll, we're going to roll the roll it into and against the parchment. So what I do, turn it so you can see. I simply put this piece to the inside and I carefully start to roll it up. Like so. I want to roll it nice and evenly and kind of slowly. Hold on to those edges. You don't want any tearing or cracking. You can avoid it. Okay. Now once you're all rolled up, like I am here, you just leave this cake out to cool completely. So I'm going to leave it right here on the, um, the breadboard. I want this to cool to room temperature. And then I will come back. Well, sorry about that. We'll come back and I'll show you how to fill it. Okay, to make the cream cheese filling, you take two cups of uh, powdered sugar, which you can see down in there. Um, you take four ounces of cream cheese, which is half a block of cream cheese, and a quarter cup of butter. Let me grab the butter. Butter is, a quarter cup of butter is a half a stick of butter. So that all, all goes in there, along with about a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this vanilla. That's about a teaspoon. Now, that's the basis of your uh, cream cheese frosting or filling in this case. What I'm going to add is minced up candied ginger. Now, you can, if you choose to use ginger, you, you can just use it to taste. I think the last time I made this, I minced up about six of these um, slices. I get this from Trader Joe's. But my family said that there wasn't enough ginger taste. They really liked the ginger flavor. So I think I'm going to do maybe 10 or 12 of these little slices. I'm gonna mince them up fine and um, go ahead and put them in here and get it all mixed up. But what I'm going to do, whoops, sorry about that. First, I'm gonna mix up my frosting. Then I will um, stir in my ginger. And the reason is I don't want my ginger flavor to get too incorporated into the frosting flavor. I want the, I want the two flavors to be kind of separated. So the way you do that is that you, you add your ginger after you've made your frosting. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and come back to you and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I have the frosting mixed up. Um, my butter and cream cheese was still kind of cold. It's cold in our house, so it didn't, it didn't, uh, warm up nicely. And boy, it really was tough to, tough to use the mixer on. I was using this little cheap hand mixer. Um, so make sure that your butter and your, uh, cream cheese are at least room temperature. Um or you're gonna have a problem unless you have a big, huge mixer to use. I do, I have a big industrial Blakesley mixer that Grant got me, but the darn thing is so heavy, I like to just use my little cheap KitchenAid hand mixer when I can. Anyway, this is how I cut up the, um, the ginger. Isn't this cool? This is a little piece of 
uh, marble that was left over as a sample at my parents house back when we were getting ready to remodel it and um, I kept the sample because it makes a great little cutting board I'm assuming they didn't want it back I never came back to get it okay so anyhow this is all I do um, this is a I don't know if I'd call this a dice or a mince but I just cut it into narrow strips like so and then I just cut across those strips sorry my hands in the way when I'm doing this um, I just cut across them and I make little cubes so that's about how big you want it to be so I'm gonna go ahead and let's see what am I gonna do oh I know I'm going to go ahead and put my ginger as I cut it up. I'm going to stick it in this little this little melamine bowl that used to belong to Grant's mom and dad. I remember when we'd have parties or get-togethers at their house, they would always serve chips and dips, and this was one of the dip bowls that they would use. So you know how I am. I love using stuff that our parents and grandparents had. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and cut up the rest of this uh, ginger here, and um, hopefully my uh, my frosting will come up to a little bit warmer, and then I'll show you how to, you just want to fold this into, into your frosting. We'll come back at that point. Okay, so here is our frosting. It's a little stiff, but it's also a little bit cold, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then here is my big bowl of ginger. Now, this would probably be three times too much ginger for most people, but my family, we love garlic, ginger, and turmeric. As far as we're concerned, you can't have too much of it. So, I'm overdoing the ginger on purpose. All I'm going to do is put this on the lowest speed and kind of stir it in like so. And basically that's all you need, just like that. Now, I'm going to give Grant these beaters because he would, he would be a very unhappy man if he didn't get to, get to lick the cream cheese and ginger frosting off of these beaters. And when it's time to come back and unroll the cake and, um, and frost it, I will show you that step. Okay, my peeps, this is now cool to the touch. And we are going to unroll it and go ahead and fill it with this. So, here's the part where it gets a little dicey. You always wonder if your your cake is cracked, and mine has. Look at that. Big old crack on the center there. It's not horrible. That can be fixed. We're not gonna worry about it, but it's unfortunate that it did crack. Okay, so. I've got it all the way unrolled. Now, with all of these cracks, the it's going to mean that I'm going to have to be pretty careful with, with the spreading of this stuff. So let's see how, how I can do here. Okay, it well, looks like it'll stand up to some to some pressure. And so now what I'm going to do is very carefully continue to to put the the filling on try to fill each of the pieces of cake that have broken away from the others 
um, as carefully as I can so so that I don't move the uh, the cake around any more than I have to. So. All right, that's looking good. Now I'm going to, and I'm not worrying about getting it completely even or right up to the edge or anything. What I'm more concerned with is, um, is just getting the filling in there as evenly as I possibly can without moving or tearing this cake anymore. You don't want the filling to come closer than about a half an inch to the edge of your cake because as you roll, this filling is going to kind of squish itself out to the sides. So it'll be coming out the sides of the cake roll anyhow. So let me get this back part done. And I have plenty of filling. I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough because I actually cut this recipe, this filling recipe, I cut it in half um, because I had a lot of extra the last time I made one of these. But it looks like a ha the, the, the half recipe that I showed you um, is perfect. Just enough. Okay. Find little places where maybe I've... I haven't put enough on. Get the rest of this out of here. Okay, now what we do is we roll up the cake again. Only obviously you don't put the, the paper inside this time. You just roll it up. And as you roll, it helps if you pull the paper up because it helps put a little bit of pressure on that cake. So I'm going to pull this back, continue to roll, using, using pulling the paper up and rolling and rolling. Now I need to push this piece of cake a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah, now this is real sticky. See, look, we're falling apart here, but I'm just going to keep rolling it up, and I'm going to get myself up to the end here. And now, I'm going to continue and just roll this parchment around the outside, just like that. So there we go. Kind of like a sushi roll. This, um, this definitely didn't turn out as well as I had hoped, but I think it's still gonna be just fine. Now this, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the freezer for a while. I'm going to cover it in a foil and um, and put it in the freezer. Then I I may cut it tonight or I may my wait till tomorrow. It just depends on if Grant wants some tonight or not. When I take it out of the freezer and cut it for the first time and unroll it, I will go ahead and and show you guys what that looks like. So it's going to go into the freezer for at least two hours. All right. Okay, here we go. It is the next day, and Grant just asked about the cake, so I thought I would go ahead and cut it up. Now, what they tell you to do in the recipe is that you take it out of the ref uh, the freezer, and this was in the freezer, um, you wait 15 minutes and then you cut it. But because this cake was kind of falling apart, I'm a little concerned that if I let it get too soft, it's going to shift on me. So I'm going to give it a try. 
um, to cut it in its frozen state. So um, what you do is you peel off the uh, what is this called? This is called parchment paper. Yeah, you peel off the parchment paper. You can also use a just regular like plastic wrap. I used that on the last cake. But I really like, I prefer using parchment paper when I can. Okay, let me toss this gross piece of parchment paper. And now I'm going to take my infamous Popeil's Bionic Knife that has an interesting story behind it. I've had this thing since 1978, and I am now going to cut, or attempt to cut this frozen cake. So what you're supposed to do, if you want it to be real pretty, is you cut these edges off. I'm gonna go in about an inch, and I'm just gonna cut this, because Grant will eat this, I, obviously I wouldn't. So I'm using a sawing motion, it seems to be cutting beautifully. And and there you go. Hung together. It's looking beautiful. Looking so pretty on the inside. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this up in about inch and a half slices. So that should give me one, two, three, four, five, six about seven more slices. Then we are going to uh, have Grant give it a taste test. Okay, this cake is um, this thawed for about, I don't know, close to 10 minutes. It could go easily go another 10 minutes, but Grant is anxious. He wants to try his lemon ginger cheesecake roll. <laughs> so, here you go, honey. Thank you, sweetie. See what you think about that. Now remember, if it were a little warmer, the taste would be fuller. Uh, you know me. I know you. <laughs> I chew it until I, I get the flavor anyway. <laughs> Delightful. Is it delightful, really? Very much so. I think I'll go back to a homemade cake the next one I make. That was oh. that was boxed, but it was an experiment, and you know, kind of semi failed. It tastes wonderful. Tastes it's, wonderful. Well, good. I'm so glad. Okay, that's it, you guys. Grant gave it a big thumbs up, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>